Researching and finding new information should be a university student's bread and butter, but it's not always as simple as a short consult with Dr. Google. Some topics have decades of literature to trawl through, and you have to know what's already out there before you can figure out the last piece of the puzzle. Peer-reviewed articles are the gold standard, but you have to go through hard copies in physical libraries or use online databases with expensive subscription fees. Academic search engines like Google Scholar are trying to disrupt this model of information access. But are they worth your time? Can there be a one-stop shop for your reports and assignments and help you work smarter, not just harder? If it's your first time here, my name is Jack Wang, a microbiologist, science educator, and the 2020 Australian University Teacher of the Year. On this channel, we talk about professional learning for students and early career researchers. And in this video, we will be talking about academic search engines or ASEs. The whole point of this exercise is to save time. So the TLDW version of the video is this. ASEs apply the convenience and power of web-based search engines towards scholarly sources, not just online shopping or cat videos. Unlike traditional academic databases like Scopus or Web of Science, most ASCs are free and often directly linked to the full text versions of these articles. Search engines rely on crawler algorithms that together with artificial intelligence tools, constantly trawl through the internet, indexing and categorizing all the documents it can find. Once a document has been tagged with metadata linked to a keyword, it will come up instantly when you search for that keyword. This metadata creates networks of related articles and you can save papers to personalized reading lists and batch export to reference management software like EndNote. The downside is that these algorithms are tuned perpetually update themselves and find new content, which may compromise how reproducible your searches are. You can still use ASE strategically though as the first pass through the information for pairing it with a more traditional database to vet the integrity of your searches. I wrote an article about this for Times Higher Education, linked below. That's ASEs in a nutshell. But if you're still here, let's talk about which ASCs work best for you. ASCs with a broad multidiscipline focus will have the largest database of documents and sources, and Google Scholar has a head start. Other ASCs are catching up though. Bielfeld, Academic Search Engine, Base, Semantic Scholar, and RefSeq have rapidly increased their number of sources over the last few years. It's usually the first number that headlines their website. The number of sources is not the best metric though, because it depends on how they filter for your searches. Google Scholar is backed, of course, by Google, the most ubiquitous web crawling algorithm in the world. Semantic Scholar uses what they describe as artificial intelligence-driven research tools. If that sounds like an opaque black box, that's because it is. And the proprietary nature of these tools or Google's search engine really can limit how much control you have over the search. Most of the time, it really isn't an issue because we're coming in cold. When you know nothing about a topic, the most recent or relevant sources are a great point to start. But when you're trying to compile a definitive list of documents about a specific topic, this is where a black box approach won't work. A study has shown that even when using identical search terms over consecutive queries, Google Scholar may return different results. Not great if you're doing a meta-analysis of all the literature in your field over a period of time. Other ASCs are aware of this design flaw, so BASE uses an internationally standardized protocol for harvesting metadata and go out of their way to disclose content providers. Now your mileage may vary, I don't need it to be transparent if it gives me the right results and saves my time. You do need to be aware that the most sophisticated algorithms are designed to change over time. So ASCs are not a good way to obtain a historical accounting of your discipline paper by paper. Let's talk about costs. All of the ASCs we've talked about are free to access. The hidden cost, however, in both money and time is if you can actually read the full text of the linked documents. It's usually quite patchy. You'd be lucky if half of the articles you want can be accessed through Google Scholar. And Core is a search engine that gets around this by only hosting open access articles free for everyone. That's great. But again, your mileage may vary. Your discipline may choose not to publish in open access journals by default, so then you're out of luck using Core. Speaking of access, this will also change depending on your location. Google is famously banned or heavily censored in different parts of the world, and it's all very volatile. Governments and big tech companies often don't see eye to eye, and everyone's priorities and legislation changes over time. A good example of this is Microsoft Academic the biggest competitor to Google Scholar for a few years running until 2021, when it chose to shut down its whole operation. The academic research part of the market just wasn't worth it for Microsoft to pursue, so they shut up shop. In this volatile climate, it's hard recommending ASCs as your one-stop shop for literature searches, so I think the best approach is still to pair an ASC with a more traditional academic database, like Web of Science or Scopus, along with databases specifically tailored 
for your discipline. It doesn't matter which search engine you choose, any librarian will tell you what matters most is a good plan for your search strategy. Summarize your topic or research questions into one or two sentences, underline keywords in your topic, and list out synonyms as alternate search terms. Search with your first set of keywords and check if you're getting too many or too few relevant results. If it's too many, then try sorting by publication date, citation counts. If it's too few, try different combinations of keywords. You can save all the relevant articles to a reading list. Google Scholar makes this pretty easy to do. Then you go through these lists one by one using the cited by or related articles functionality to flesh out other relevant articles. A really common search mistake is not taking advantage of Boolean operators, especially in Google Scholar. And in all caps, links multiple search terms and limits the results to only articles that have all of the search terms. Or again in all caps, expands your results. Articles with any of the search terms come back. Dash or the minus sign excludes specific keywords and when you combine this with site, it excludes results from specific websites. Wikipedia being a common one to exclude for peer reviewed searches. Tilde or the squiggly line on top of your keyboard expands results by including synonyms for your key term as defined by the search engine. And quotation marks limits your results to only articles with that exact phrasing. You can combine some or all of these depending again on if you have too many or too few relevant results. Google Scholar and other academic search engines are not a panacea for literature searches. In some ways, it was easier back when we had to physically go into libraries because there was less information to sort out overall. At the end of the day, search engines are just a tool and you need to figure out how to use them creatively. You can make a separate reading list for every new paper you're writing, share these reading lists with your co-authors during final copy editing and save everyone some time, create email alerts every time a specific author in your field publishes a new paper or one of their papers is cited by someone. Or you can get an alert anytime someone cites one of your papers and you can track them down to see if there is enough for a new collaboration. Like anything, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And tools like Google Scholar can really improve your workflow if you know what you're doing. This is the Bylab Collective. I'm Jack Wang and I'll see you in the next video.